Would you like to give us the views from the Academy? I'll give it a go, Senator. Um, thank you for the invitation to contribute to this. And um, as you indicated, I'm here uh, representing the Academy of Science. Uh, I'm a member of its, I am a member of its council. Um, I've been directly involved uh, for a number of years with it. So I guess that's why they asked me on Wednesday if I could uh, fill this gap. Um, the Academy put in a submission. I will assume that it's been read and that you may well ask me some questions about that and I'd be happy to take those. But uh, never one to miss an opportunity. I thought I would make some other comments that are related to the topics of the inquiry as well and that impinge on the Academy's submission. So I should uh, tell you that I'm not a scholar in this field. Um, I won't give you any great academic depth in uh, or well, there won't be any great academic depth to my comments. But in order to introduce it, I will tell you what I am. I am an Australian citizen. Uh, since 1990, when I was first appointed a statutory officer of the Commonwealth, when I chaired a statutory authority and was deputy chair of another, I've been directly involved with nationhood and with democracy. Uh, all the way through until 2015, when I retired as chief scientist, a pleasant way to transition to retirement, the then Prime Minister told me, after 16 years as a Vice-Chancellor, the last 10 of them at the ANU. Um, during that time, I've been intermittently close to the very machinery of democracy, and indeed nationhood. Uh, I've had to deal with seven Prime Ministers and probably 35 to 40 ministers in various guises and various levels of competence uh, during that period. So I know a bit, I've seen a lot, and I found ample cause now to be anxious, partly because I'm observant. I find the present state of the country depressing and the future as I see it uncertain because not enough of us care enough to work hard for change, uh, for improvement. I think when we don't like what we see, for example, question time in parliament, uh, too many of us turn away and turn off. It's as if it would get better when we do nothing but ignore it get more cynical and have no expectation of anything better. Now, others will tell you the consequences of some of that behaviour when they talk about their work, uh, very fine work indeed, with polls and surveys and so on, and I will leave that to them. But for me, as an observer, it's easily illustrated by voting patterns. At the last couple of elections, roughly two million of us chose not to vote or not to vote validly, and we should well ask why that's so. Um, the, uh, the issue for me is that it's simply pathetic for us to argue that it happens in other countries so it's okay, uh, or 88 per cent or so voting isn't bad. Uh, we're not another country, and I think we should try to get full engagement in all dimensions. So why might that be? Well, it's a deeply cultural issue, I think, and cultural change is hard, we all know that. Um, I think the change that we see now uh, and the lack of trust in politics and politicians and institutions has uh, evolved over time, got worse over time. Uh, I know that we can fiddle with bits and pieces on the margins and have a bit of this and a bit of that and make the assumption that it might be better, but we have to recognise that it's cultural, it's deep, and uh, I believe that change starts with you, uh, the polity of this country. I recently penned a piece for The Guardian which might get published um, either today or tomorrow. Um, I, along with others, was asked what was the one thing we would change about Australia if we had the chance. After we all asked, uh, I gather, only one, uh, my chosen one was to get we the people, all of us, engaged. The basic, basis, basic thesis being that if we, the, if we the people want something enough, uh, loudly enough, the people we employ to work in our interests, you, uh, will actually respond. When we aren't, we're taken for granted. We get told when it suits about how the Australian people are not mugs and they will get treated like mugs for most of the rest of the time. I also made the point that in that article and elsewhere that one of the things we, we should want as a people is leadership. Straight, honest, open, persuasive, insightful, smart, intelligent, particularly in our polity, values and principles of a high order. We should applaud it when we see it and act decisively when we don't. 
Instead, I think we get self-interest, transparently, obviously, a greater interest in securing the job than actual leadership through the tough times and the challenges ahead in an unpredictable world that will mean hard decisions have to be made and the community has to have the choices put to them in a way they can see, understand and accept. It's too often power without wisdom. We get cliches thrown around as if they mean something. Now, elections are critical uh, and obviously a critical component in a democracy, but ours tend to end up ritualistic smooching based on fear campaigns and kissing babies, uh, pure opposition rather than the genuine contest of ideas and a cliched concern for we the people that soon fades. We see expertise belittled and cherry-picked. Climate change is a great example of that, endless example of that in this country, uh, but the list goes on and there are others. Half-truths have become the order of the day. Climate change is a good example. And I just want to remind you that Mark Twain once said, and I quote, a half-truth is the most cowardly of lies. I believe the public has a right to know in a true and functioning democracy. How many times do we hear it's a security matter so we can't tell you, or it's on water, or it's in the bubble, or a straight out no when there is an opportunity to inform the public? When journalist homes get raided for publishing a report on a topic that is clearly in the public interest. I accept that there are genuine security matters, no question about that. But for example, the repeal of the Medivac legislation swung on a security matter that we aren't allowed to know what it was. I could go on, Senator, but I hear the tumble rolling in and the blade being sharpened. So I will finish by saying that my improvements to Australian democracy and indeed our sense of nationhood would have two components. One, I would ensure that our education system prepares people to engage. At one level, that means accepting the responsibility of being an active citizen. It means planning a future. It means ensuring that the appropriate steps and policies are taken and holding the polity to account both for what they do do and for what they don't do. My education system would be of genuine quality, genuinely and equally accessible in all parts of the country. Education would also mean that every single person would leave school with at least a basic understanding of science. As an eminent British statesman once said, he was eminent when he said it, he's not so eminent now, I gather, science is all pervasive. Nearly all the great challenges that confront us will involve the use of science and or technology if we are to live with them. He said, science lets us do more, but it doesn't tell us whether doing more is right or wrong, good or bad. He went on to talk about the community decision-making and moral judgments that needed to be made by the community. In order to do that properly and wisely, and consistently, you need some basic understanding of how science works, the benefits, the negatives, and we've also got to work with other disciplines because at the end of the day, you can tell people something is good for them, but if we don't get the behavioural change needed, if we don't get the understanding, the embracing of the need, uh, then it's not going to happen and we see that around us all the time. So my argument for education is broadly based. I don't argue only for science. I do argue for education as the basis for the sort of society we wish to be and we wish to become. The second point is I do believe that the lack of trust we now see, especially in the younger cohorts of our community, is very largely down to the way politicians disport themselves. Question time is a disgrace, often in, the, often in front of school groups, and they know that that sort of behaviour would not be acceptable in their schoolyard. I pity the teachers when they get them back to school and they see the role models or try to emulate the role models they've just seen. We get told that sports people have to behave because they're role models, and then you look at question time or the behaviour of some of our politicians. The use of public funds can be, not always, a disgrace. How often did we hear it was within entitlements, but to avoid ambiguity, I'll pay it back? No robocalls there. How are we to accept the fact that rules written for the community at large do not apply to the people who represent that community in this place? I think for our democracy to prosper, politicians have to earn back trust. It's not given, it's earned, we all know that. And that will mean a close, hard look at how it works, how it presents, how it represents, how it behaves, and whether, for example, the rules they write for themselves are more lenient than the rules they write for us. What should we think of as an Australian citizen when we see that a letter that included um, uh, false uh, data 
um, that is not being investigated because it caused low level harm. Every drip on a stone is integral to the integrity of the stone, every single drip. And if low level harm is, is okay for public officials to use to try to get an advantage over others, then I don't know where this country is heading. Um, I saw in the paper today that there was an extra $150 million in sports grants that were awarded without public applications during the last election campaign. These are the sort of things that I think when people read them and see them and hear about them, the respect for the whole process, the respect for the institutions is slowly but surely eroded. Finally, Senators, I want to end on a slightly more positive note. I want to say that I know a lot of politicians and I know that many of them try to do the right thing most of the time and I like a lot of them. Sadly, the behaviour of others drags down the trust in all of them uh, when not all of them deserve it. And I think that also is something we need to address. We have to learn as a community to be more nuanced. One, we have to engage. Two, we have to see the best as the aspiration for all and not reduce our perceptions of it all to an average that's too low. I think the machines get good and honourable people and they turn the handle. We deserve the best, not what the machines spit out. It has to change and the change starts with you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.